Right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Emperor Lore. So today what we're going to be working on is we're going to be creating a thirst bar and uh, general thirst mechanics. So this is kind of like phase one for what I want to get done. There's other parts that uh, clearly need to be added before we need, can progress with this particular feature, but I'm going to use the heart as a baseline for the actual icon, which is a 9x9 nine nine square of um, the actual um, canvas. So I wanted to also get in the colors from the uh, base game as well, so I ended up going ahead with um, the what do you call it? the colors from the oxygen and I just kind of started blending in some things so I got like a water droplet like this now I'm going to save three different um, parts for this particular thing uh, we need one for the full uh, one for the half now I was debating how I should do the half part and I decided to go with like a half a drop like that and then I also needed an empty version which would uh, indicate like always be displayed so just the outline for the uh, icon so once I did that I needed to import the textures and get the assets all set up so I needed to go to the assets tab import it as a GUI texture and then I could basically start working with um, a overlay so I needed an overlay to display all the different icons and the placement took a little bit while to actually figure out where it needed to go so basically what I did was I just started importing a couple textures you might be able to see it on the screen there and I'm going to move that um, f basically just overlay a bunch of them uh, over the original ones but I didn't know what side I wanted to put it on so the hearts and stuff are on this side, but the oxygen and food is on the other side, right? So I was wondering how I could fit this into the actual bar without um, having it like in the way per se. And uh, working around the base mechanics is always an issue. So you might notice that we have a couple things going on here. One of the issues is it's not fully, um, one of them isn't fully actually displayed properly. It's uh, a little bit off to the center there. So I'm going to go ahead and fix that up quickly. And I just needed to go into the overlay and I roughly counted how many blocks I needed to go up. So I had a general idea of how many pixels I needed to go up from there. So, and then for the other one, I needed to make sure that it was on the center bottom. Uh, access so it would be rel relative to the center bottom now with that being said the how or the food bar or the water bar is now above the hearts but I didn't I remembered that hearts can actually go above the heart level so I needed something a little bit on the other side so I just started moving them over to the other side roughly and I needed to figure out whereabouts I was going to be putting these. So I just started to align them with the other end of the uh, scale here. And that gave me something to work with. And now they're on this side of where the food is. And I could go ahead and start adding the actual textures and stuff to them. So I'm going to import the rest of them and basically just align them all up. And we'll try to keep them... Um, as center as possible for the actual design. Now I had to kind of cramp them together a little bit more after I imported them because uh, the food bar isn't exactly um, designed the same way that we're relaying these out. Uh, there's, they're more cramped together. They kind of overlay one half usually, so like one pixel. So I needed to redo that, but. I uh, needed to import the halves. We'll come back to the display conditions in a little bit. We needed to um, create those first, but um, basically I just wanted to make sure that they were all set up for the uh, center bottom um, corner. And then I could basically start importing the full textures as well. 
So basically importing the full ones. Now we'll come back to the display conditions as well to these, but we need to get them all imported first and uh, set up with the actual display conditions. So once we have a general idea of how they're going to be looking, then we can start actually programming things in for actually like how they function and display. So uh, the next thing that I needed to do was I needed to create a variable for um, the player's fluid. So I needed a player uh, lifetime variable and then I needed to make it a number as well. And that will give us a value that we can start with like uh, 40 or something like that. And then that will give us uh, 40 bars or something. I think it was like 20 actually, because we have 10 uh, icons or something like that. So now that we have the actual variable, what we're gonna need to do is we're going to need to test uh, for our conditions. And we're going to go ahead and basically go and grab a condition. We're gonna test if it is uh, greater than zero. And I think it's greater than zero, I can't quite see. Uh, equal to or less than zero, pardon me. So if it's equal to or less than zero, then we want to display um, basically nothing. And if it is equal to or greater than, and then I just kept basically creating the conditions. There's ones where it tests for exact values. Those ones that are exact values are usually uneven. And that means that it's going to be a half a heart. And then every other value for an even number is going to be a equal to or greater than. And then the amount of hearts or fluid bars that we would want. So I needed 20 of these in total. And I then needed to link up all of the procedures here are uh, for the conditions so I needed to go ahead and scroll down and link up all of the conditions that we made so going through the halves first I could basically set the halves up by selecting the uneven numbers and then I needed the full ones which were later on so once all those were set up I could go ahead and um, test in game to see how it actually looks uh, but I needed to actually make sure that we're all set up for the full ones as well. And this took a couple minutes to do because I needed to make sure that all of the conditions were properly set up and all that um, particular stuff. But um, basically it just took a little bit of time to go through and make sure that they were all linked up and stuff like that. Once I did that, I needed to go ahead and create another variable. This time we're going to call it player fluid saturation. Saturation is going to basically allow us to um, make it so it's a number on a player lifetime variable. So basically what this will do is it will be the amount of ticks until the um, liquid starts decreasing. So if it's higher than say a certain value, like if it's not at zero, then the bars will not start to decrease. So it's also gonna be used to um, calculate the um, actual, uh, what do you call it, the fluid for um, between the times the bars are going to go down. So basically, rather than have it just constantly remove the health bars, we're gonna have saturation um, take part in the timer so it will actually like slowly decrease after the one bar is removed and then we'll set it to like 15 seconds or something like that which is like 300 ticks so once we do that we can go ahead so we want to first test if the um, value for one of the things is equal to or greater than or greater than zero and we're going to select our saturation for this and then we're going to make sure that our saturation can decrease uh, by one every time that is above zero so that's the first important thing we're also going to need a else statement and we're going to make sure that we can uh, reset this uh, to the saturation to um, we'll set it to 300 or something like that later we'll probably create a um, config later on that we can customize the fluid um, times and stuff like that that is at least on the agenda it can be in the game or the mod config file but I needed to go ahead and create some notes just so I know what everything is for and stuff like that 
So the next thing I needed to do was I needed to go ahead and create a condition to test if our player fluid is greater than zero. And we're gonna put that part into the actual, um, if our fluid is greater than zero. So we want to make sure that the fluid saturation gets reset, right? So I'm gonna set this to like 300, which is again, 15 ticks uh, or 15 seconds. And then we can go ahead and uh, basically reset that value. So every time that this happens, we, we can basically decrease our, um, our uh, bar a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our f player fluid, which is again, what we control for a bar. And then I'm gonna decrease this by one. So this is only gonna happen if our player fluid is greater than zero. So if it's one or higher. And I also want to make sure that our flu uh, fluid saturation or saturation only gets reset when the, the bar for the player is greater than zero. So this means that it won't take a while to reset and stuff like that. Reason being is if it becomes zero, then we want to go ahead and deal damage. And reason for that is we're going to need a condition down here and test if our current health is, uh, we're gonna make an else if statement actually, and we're going to go ahead and test if our current health is greater than, um, or greater than zero. And then what we can do is we can go ahead and select our damage uh, block. Now, I think I started working with this one, but, I ended up using a custom damage block instead to, so I could use a custom damage message. So basically same method, we're just um, basically subtracting or dealing one damage for the player every time that this happens. So we're going to just use this for now and I think I needed to create a um, actual damage uh, thing so I'll probably end up coming back to this in just a moment. So yeah, we're gonna create that damage block first and we need to create, um, I was thinking a command for actually dealing damage for this, but uh, fluids, I think it was going with player instead and then what I needed was uh, fluid. And then we're going to go ahead and run this as a timer so this is going to be our timer here and what I want to do is I want to make sure that this is only run for players because we're using player variables so I needed to go ahead and find a way to actually test if the player has permission for first I'm not sure if I kept that or not but um, I wanted to make sure that the player had permission and we would have to make sure that the script is only run through a player in order to make it work. So this is our bar at the moment. It's currently not doing too much. Um, if we walk around, it doesn't really take in consideration the movement or anything like that. I want to eventually add uh, proper support for movement and uh, other factors. But as you can see, it wasn't actually doing anything. So we needed to actually run the script. Uh, through the execute command. So I was trying a few different uh, methods. I needed to make sure that this function was actually ticking. And um, I'm almost wondering if it needs to, if the player needs permission. So as you can see, we are slowly decreasing in our fluid now, uh, just standing around and stuff like that, which is great. Uh, it takes a little while for it to actually do anything. And that's because it takes 15 seconds. So this is the script that I had. Um, though I want to go ahead and make an and statement and we're going to test if the uh, if it's not a um, let's see here I want if not in survive or not in creative and not in um, adventure mode so basically we're going to just duplicate the not statement we're going to make sure that when the player is not in creative mode and not in or spectator, then it will only run the script. So basically that means that it will affect um, adventure mode and survival mode. So uh, basically same idea is how the food um, saturation and stuff works. 
And then what we needed to do was we needed to create a um, condition. And we're going to go ahead and just basically run it. So it our condition for it being displayed here is not going to do, um, not display it for the creative or um, spectator mode. So once we're in spectator survival, we can see it actually working. We can disable it when we go into a different creative mode. We can go into spectator and survival and venture, and we can all see that it works accordingly now. And that brings us to the next thing that we needed to do, and that's set up the damage properties, I think. Uh, we'll have to wait until we actually get our health down a little bit more. I'm just going to run around and see what how it actually functions and stuff like that. Just to make sure everything works, because I haven't tested the damage mechanics just yet. So I needed to make sure that everything was actually functioning properly. And sometimes when you have certain things like this, it can sometimes um, take a little bit of time before it, you notice that there's like an issue. And our first issue is right here. So our oxygen bubbles are right above the uh, where the fluid are. So we need to go ahead and move our liquid bubbles one block up because we can't actually change where the location of the oxygen bubbles are located. So I ended up moving them one pixel up just so they were above the oxygen and it looks pretty good with the oxygen part there now so uh, it does look like like there isn't there anything right there at the moment but it does look a little bit better than what there was so we can actually work with that now and i just needed to go ahead and run around and try to get our fluid down now it's on a timer at the moment so running around doesn't really do anything uh, we could link it up to if the player was over going through, uh, like has their motion above like 0 0.5 or something like that. And then we could decrease the thirst if they are basically walking. Because when you're walking or jumping or whatever, your speed is generally um, set to 1. So we could do motion which we'll probably do in a little bit. So one of the things that I noticed when I was doing that was the health was going down way too fast and we needed a certain timer to basically decrease uh, over time so it wasn't basically dealing damage constantly. And we're going to go ahead and just set our saturation here for the time being and we're going to set this to maybe like... 100 ticks which is five seconds so every five seconds the player will deal damage and then we want a new timer variable uh, a number one for this particular value because the saturation is already being used and we don't want to keep the saturation going up when we're actually dealing damage right so uh, that would make it so it would um, use the other part of the script so we need to make sure that we're actually using the damage uh, timer for this one and that will allow us to basically sync the data a little bit better now we're going to create a damage element and we're going to call it dehydration and then finally what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to give it a uh, proper descriptions for the death messages and I needed to figure out how to phrase this in the sentence that is basically going and being created so Basically, what I wanted to do was make sure that all the um, messages would relate to dehydration or dehydrated. And then what we could do is we could add a custom damage variable. And we're going to deal damage to the player and we're going to select dehydration instead. And we're just going to damage them one heart uh, each time that the they're dehydrated so over time the thing goes down so what I'm gonna have to do is basically um, test this for a little while and make sure that it works and I was just basically sitting around waiting for it to go down it took a while to do that but uh, in short this is just gonna be phase one for what I want to do with it there's other mechanics like drinking that we still need to set up to regenerate the saturation and also the bars um, which we'll have to apply to food and basically 
uh, probably do that through item MBT or something like that. But uh, we could do it through tags as well and group items together through tags. Uh, there's multiple ways that we could go about doing it. So um, we could even do a config file if we wanted to. And then we could read from that config file. So basically I just wanted to see how the, the damage was actually affecting the, the player. And the last time I tested this, it was it drained the health in a matter of seconds. Uh, and now I'm just basically seeing if it will run properly like I wanted. So we got a little bit of damage there. And it will continue damaging us, I guess, until we have no um, full saturation for food. Or at least under a certain bar of food. And then we'll start taking actual damage. Which is pretty good. I mean, that's what... I would imagine that it would be doing anyways. So we can see that we're starting to take damage now that we have one bar of food um, missing. And we're just gonna let this uh, go ahead and I'm gonna speed up time so we can see what it actually looks like. So we have one heart left, half a heart. And we'll see what happens. And it said dev died from dehydration. So it perfectly works. Outside of that, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. We'll be working on this next week as well, or next time that we work on it. And if you're new to my channel, again, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.